Hello and welcome to the Vidalia Conference and Convention Center. Today we're here with Sherry Rabb, who is the Director of Marketing and Public Relations for the City of Vidalia. She has years of experience in marketing and relations, and we're lucky to have her tell us a little bit about how to attract people to your communities. Sherry? Hey Tommy, how are you doing? I'm great today, thank you. Good to talk to you today. Um, first off, I want to say that the city of Vidalia is indeed a city on the move. Since the three and a half years that I've been here, we have encompassed so many more things to look at, to build, and different ways of marketing. You were talking about all my years of experience. Marketing has changed so drastically within the past uh, year to two years, it's unbelievable. Um, I've been in television, I've been in radio, I've done marketing for different entities around the Miss Lou, so you really learn all there is about television, radio, billboards, magazine, newspapers, the whole entity as it relates to marketing. In the city of Vidalia, one of the biggest hurdles that I had to cross when I first got here was to let people know about the Vidalia Conference and Convention Center. And speaking of, I want to be sure and say it's the Bryant O'Hammett Vidalia Conference and Convention Center because Bryant Hammett was instrumental in helping us get this. We do have an entity that is paid for. So everything that we have here pretty much pays our bills. We don't have a mortgage note that you have to go to right. every month. But um, getting the people in this area to know that there was a convention center here, I was pretty much blown away by the people that may live five blocks or five miles away that didn't realize what the Vidalia Convention Center actually was and what we could do for them. So that was one of the biggest hurdles that I crossed when I first got here. And of course I went immediately to our local advertisers, our radio stations, our newspapers, our magazines, and our televisions, and did things so that people could, in this area, could know what we were, what they could have here, and just to come see us. And as we all know, word of mouth travels drastically. So that really helped in building a bridge to let everybody know, come over here, check us out. Um, the next thing we did was build a website. Our website for the Vidalia Convention Center is astronomical. We have so many people that visit our website to see what we have going on here. We have a layout of the facility, which is a lot easier for somebody to look at, even if they live five blocks away, right. you know. They can kind of go online and look at the layout, see how many people, because we have it specified for them, what each room holds, whether it's theater style, whether it's, you know, for a convention or a concert, whatever it might be. Right. Um, some of the things that we decided to do after that was increase our audience. So we did some research and I ended up doing some magazine articles and some advertising uh -huh. with some magazines in the New Orleans area. Um, the number one and number two thing in the United States for visitors to see is the Mississippi River. Really? We just happened to be <laughs> right on the Mississippi River. Uh -huh. So in getting, and you know, everybody wants to go to New Orleans as well. I think that's like in the number top 10 list on the things to see in the United States. Um, and we've got the best of both worlds. We're on the river. You can look over and see Natchez, beautiful Natchez, the bluffs right over there. You've got people that want to come see the antebellum homes. So they do. They come over and they walk up and down our riverfront. Uh, we also added a webcam to our website. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that come back and forth. Um, China, that's a big one. I mean, Japan, I'm sorry, is, um, we have a lot of people from Japan that come over. We have a lot of international that uh, visitors that come and walk on the riverfront, um, wave at their families back home if somebody's out here and can tell them, you know, that we have a webcam, you know, you can wave to your friends back home. And a lot of them that have seen the webcam and know when they get here. So that was, you know, an out-of-pocket expense that we came up with at first that has pretty much paid for itself by visitor participation. Right. Um, with the flood last year, we got 
more coverage than you can imagine, mm -hmm. nationally and internationally. We had people from all over the world calling and coming over to do stories on us. Um, was it the best thing for them to do a story on? No, it wasn't. But it got them to know where Bedelia, Louisiana put was. Put you on the map. It put us on the map, That's big time. Map. Exactly. And we've had several of those people to call back and, you know, check up on us and do little articles on us. Um, the unregulated radio, they've done some things on us. They, you know, kind of kept up to date on what to do. But um, since the flood, which is why I'm going there, we did do advertising with all of the other entities that I told you about. After the flood, we were pretty much on a holding pattern as far as spending dollars for marketing. And as everybody knows, marketing is one of the first things that go when you've got a tight budget. Um, you have to kind of think outside the box. Thank God for social, me social media. It has really saved us and saved dollars as far as trying to utilize what we can without having to spend money or a lot of money in order to get the word out there. Um, with social media, of course, you've got Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Push Local has done really, really well for us within the past couple of weeks. Um, it's something that it doesn't take a lot of time. It And the social medias, to me, are way easier because it's point blank. I mean, you put it on there and it's gone. Um, as far as Facebook, it is one of my biggest advertising tools uh, because on the page, on the Vidalia Conference and Convention Center page, I can actually tell the demographics, the age group, um, the gender, where they're from, um, and we have international as well as national and local people that visit our page. You really have to keep it exciting. You have to stay um, on point. You can't put you can't dilute your page with other things. You have to stay on point with what I do is keep everything that's on the riverfront on the Bedelia Convention Center page. Sometimes we'll push a few other things that may be in the city of Bedelia, um, but very seldom do we do that. You don't want to dilute your page too much. But you can tell automatically by doing your analytics on it who's seeing your page, um, what age group, is that specific event targeting um, or if it's not targeting somebody, okay, maybe I didn't make it juicy enough, maybe the picture wasn't good. So you can go back immediately, change your picture, change your words, you can push it to a certain age group, you can push it to um, everybody that, you know, drives a Ford Fusion, not really, but you know, yeah. you, can, you can pretty much pinpoint who you want to send your message to. Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, our website analytics is um, something that has really helped us as well because you don't change your website up as much. Um, the only thing that we really change on our website is our news box we have on the front page. And that kind of keeps you keeps everyone up to date with the events that are happening. You can go to their website or just lets you know. It doesn't give you the whole nine yards, but you, it lets you know what's going on in the area. Um, another thing that has really helped, um, like I said, since the flood, we have been cut back, had budget cuts, but uh, Louisiana North and LTPA. Instead of like what we used to do is go and pay booth space where, you know, it can be anywhere from $200 to $2,000 to rent a booth space and set up and attract people to your business. I've incorporated with LTPA and Louisiana North to go and share space with them. So you have to go and meet everyone that's at these conventions and you have to be a little educated on everything that's happening in your area in Louisiana or be able to find out for them when they ask about, you know, right. what about the big bear hunt in Tallulah? You right. know, and at first you're like, you know, <laughs> deer in the headlights, I don't know, what about it, you know? Right. So you have to really learn more about your state and your area to go to those places and in turn help the other people that are there learn more about your area. Right. 
which has been really beneficial because some of the uh, ladies from South Louisiana have um, really sent a lot of people up this way. If they're leaving the New Orleans, um, some of Tangipahoa, some of those parishes and um, cities down that way, they're sending them up this way to see things. So it really kind of melds together and helps us a lot. Um, one of the other things that I've found that you get really creative when you don't have money, so you really have to work with a lot of people too. Uh, couple times, um, I've worked with uh, Frogmore Plantation, Delta Music Museum, uh, Comfort Inn, um, several events that have happened on the riverfront to um, work together. And instead of, I mean, a full page ad is just so boom in your face. Looks good, looks like you got a lot going on. So if you can work with other people, instead of paying that one price for a full page ad, pay a quarter, a half, or something like that, where you're still getting your bang for your buck, actually more bang for your buck than you would a smaller ad. Yes, because they can see what community-wide, what is available there. Exactly, and we have several magazines that um, are more than willing to work with you and help those things happen as well. Those magazines get results. They really do bring people. They really do. There was a recent article on a restaurant in Natchez, and right after that, people from Covington started coming up here to go to the this restaurant I'm talking mm -hmm. about, including Baton Rouge. All these people who weren't coming here exactly. were coming to try the food that they read about. Exactly. And those magazines you're referring to. Well, it's amazing to me. Um, the people that will, because you need to ask them, you know, if they come here, um, because we do, we ask the people that are just touring the center. Now, our welcome center is also located in the convention center. Right. Um, they are tremendous. That staff is unbelievable as far as being knowledgeable of things that are going on in the Miss Lou area. They really, really help a lot. Um, the Vidalia Welcome Center is pretty much up there in the running every month with the big cities in Louisiana, your New Orleans and your places like that. Now, number-wise, you know, of course, you know, we don't have 40,000 that come through here a month, but we do have anywhere from 500 to 1,500. And I recently saw they broke it down by um, countries where they're from. Exactly. They and do that every month. A lot of Louisiana tourism, yeah, sure does. Um, it, I forgot what the deal was um, this past month. We had people from Germany, Denmark, um, I can't remember where all they were from, but it was just really astronomical. And some of them had been on our website. And that's, good that's how, yeah, they you know bounce from different places, but ours just happens to pop up a lot. So, and then we do have people that are friends of friends on Facebook that actually comes through as well. We have, um, I think it's 24 countries on our Facebook page right now of people that are just checking things out, yeah. seeing what it is. Before I go anywhere, whether it's New Orleans or Baton Rouge or a long distance from mm -hmm. here, I'm on the internet. I'm looking at the restaurants, I'm looking at venues. I plan my trip pretty much before I even leave my house. Yeah, exactly. So I think a lot of people are that way. They get on the internet to search out what they want, they make a list, and that's what they do. Right. Well, um, another thing is you have to stay abreast of the trends. Um, people change, age groups change, nationalities change. It's like a wave of things to come. I was doing some um, research on tourism and the big trend now is 65 and plus that are traveling. It went 35 million to plus 40 million in the past, I think, two years. So those people are traveling more. So you have to know how to target them. What do they want to see? Are they birding? Are they coming to look at the river? Or do they want to see cotton for the first time? You know, that's a big deal. Um, have they heard of the three famous cousins from Faraday? So, when you're looking at the convention center, of course we want everybody to book their event here, but we also have to have things for them to do. We work with Mississippi, um, as I said earlier. Um, we, you know, we try to fill up our hotel, and then they go 
to next, we call around, I get the best rates for them. We go to the rates of the different places, um, and the people in Natchez have been really, really well as far as working things, working out with us. Um, they want to know about the carriage rides. You know, it's it's a different scenario on both sides of the river of things that they can do, and we complement each other well. Okay. Well, we thank you so much for your time. Are there any parting thoughts you would like to share? Come to Vidalia, Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. <laughs> Go to our website. Go to our Facebook page. Find us and come see us. If we don't have it, we'll see if we can find it somewhere. <laughs> thank you so much, Karen. Thank you, Tommy. I appreciate it. All right.